morning, morning, morning. Hey, this one's deep. We still in the book of Matthew and uh, grasp this concept, grasp this parable. Hear what the Lord is, Lord is saying. It'll change the course of your life. It'll change how you see things. It'll change your spirit. And uh, this one's this one's deep. It's one of the it's one of the ones you can lay on the foundation. Of course, all of the word of God we need, right? Um, but this is one of the ones that helps us comprehend and put us in a place to where we can receive the word of God so that we can change and so that we can grow. So it's foundational. We in Matthew 13 verses 1 through 23, common, um, popular, I would say, the parable of the sower. Um, but I'm pretty sure we've heard it and we had a heart to receive it. So I hear this. Make sure you go to your word of God. Meditate on these scriptures. Pray on these scriptures. Fast on them for the understanding. Most importantly, most importantly, pray and ask for that understanding. And then put some action behind it and seek that understanding. That's where the prayer, the fasting, the meditation, waking up early, um, setting a part time in your day specifically for the father. That's where those things come in play. And uh, we're going to be talking about that in this lesson, too, because it is hand in hand. Um, parable of the soul. He talks about a sower went forth to sow seed, right? That seed is the word of God. He, the word of God is being sown. He says some falls by the wayside. Some falls on stony places. Some falls or receives it in the ground. Thorns grow up amongst it. They get choked out and unfruitful. And then some fall in good ground. All right. Now, the disciples come to Yahashua. They come to Jesus and they ask him, why do you speak to the multitude in parables? And he tells them, basically, that he speaks to them in parables because in hearing, they hear not. In seeing, they see not. And they don't understand. Right? Basically, what I get from that is Jesus is telling them, I'm short with them. I'm being short with them because it don't matter what I say or how I say it. They ain't going to get it. So it ain't no need for me to spend the time I spend with you, the disciples, and breaking this thing down and explaining it because they ain't going to receive it anyway. Right? Jesus was protecting his I feel like he was protecting his time. He understood that it wasn't well spent with the multitude. Why were they like that? Why are we like that? Because we're the we we are the multitude. See a lot of people watching this, we got the, the misconception that we the disciples. We're the multitude, right? We are seeking to be Disciples of Yahashua, disciples of Jesus, but we ain't on that level. Most of us ain't on that level yet. We got to be humble. We got to humble ourselves instead of exalting ourselves. And that's, you know, another part of scripture. And we'll talk about that maybe on another day. But we are the multitude. So why don't we receive the word of God? Yahashua tells us, just like the prophet Isaiah prophesied in the book of Isaiah, in hearing, they hear not, seeing, they see not, nor do they understand because their heart is wax, gross. He said it's grown dull. That's what that translates into. And uh, it's kind of funny. It's, it's sad and it's funny at the same time. He said these people's heart have wax, gross. Our hearts have wax, gross. Gross there means thick, fat, stupid. <laughs> That's why I think it's funny. Um, it's entertaining to me. I apologize for that. But notice in that verse, it's in verse 15, that it's a condition that those people inflicted on themselves. Right. The most I didn't inflict that condition on them. They inflicted it themselves and said they in seeing they see not. They don't know what they're seeing. They don't know what to perceive maybe they close their own eyes he said they close their own eyes and hearing they hear not and they don't understand because their heart is thick fat and stupid ain't nothing getting in there right now why are we like this why was i like this i can speak for myself i can give my own testimony environment experience 
I grew up in an environment where you couldn't show your emotions. Um, you had to protect yourself. And, you know, I won't get into I won't get into a bunch of details, you know what I mean? But for me, I had to cover all that up. All I had to be covered up. I had to put up these barriers so that certain things couldn't get through. Because why? We're wired for survival. So wherever we are today, wherever I am today, where I am today isn't where I was 30 years ago. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, right? But I've developed this character from that environment. So whatever your environment is, wherever you are or wherever you were in your life, you adapted to that environment. You develop barriers, you develop ways of being that basically help you to survive or get along in that environment. In my case, I had built up these barriers. I was protecting myself. I was protecting my emotions, right? Because of that, my heart was thick and fat. It was stupid, <laughs> right? The word of God can't get in there. And it's not. We don't allow the word of God to take root in us when we're that way so that it can grow and yield fruit. So we got to deal with that condition. We got to address that. How do we address that? Of course, we address it by seeking the Father. There's a place in Scripture where he's talking about the circumcision, right? Back in the day, God called Israel to circumcise the men, right? We know what circumcision is. In another place in Scripture, it talks about those who were circumcised physically, but in their hearts, they weren't circumcised. So on the outside, they appear to be the seed of Abraham because they were circumcised. They met the requirements. But on the inside, their hearts were not circumcised to receive the word of the Lord. Add that into your prayer. If you really feel it, ask the Lord to circumcise your heart for him, for love for him. Now, that's a prayer I prayed a while ago, man. And I'm telling you, it yields fruit. That yields fruit. Because what we have to address is heart problems, our own heart problems. That's the reason why we don't receive the word of God. That's why we don't understand, why we don't have the ears to hear, why we don't have the eyes to see. Because we have heart problems. We got to address those. Excuse me, I'm going to refer to my notes because it's a lot. And I want to make sure I capture this thing, right? So let's see. Yeah, for sure. Um, recognize that each thing we learn, we got to build precept on precept, teaching on teaching. It's hard to go from A and jump straight to Z, right? So we got to take it a piece at a time, a thing at a time. We need to be who we need to be in order to receive the word of God. So ask him for that understanding. Okay. The parable itself. Uh, Yahashua told the disciples that to them, the multitude, to us, it wasn't given to know, to understand because of our heart problems. So he was short in his parables. To his disciples, he took the time to break the word down. He said, all right, but to you is given. Given a gift. Receiving the word of God, understanding the word of God, perceiving it is not something that we have acquired on our own. Right. Just because we recognize that we have these heart problems that we have to address. We asked the father, he'll heal us. He said it, that he would heal us, right? Yahashua said, okay, if they recognize and they convert, I'll heal them. Okay, cool. He heals us. Then we can receive the word of God. We did not accomplish that on our own. So recognize that that's not something we did. Don't get high, mighty, exalted, whatever, telling people 
or you need to do, or you need to do, or you need to do. Go to the Father. Pray. It's a gift. So once we're gifted with the ability to see, to hear, to understand like the disciples were, then, right, Jesus said, okay, to you it's given. So he breaks it down for him. He takes additional time with the disciples to tell them what the parable meant. The parable can be summed up there's four different people or people in receiving the word of God. At any given time, we can be any one of those four people, depending on the day, depending on the scripture. So don't, you know, think, OK, oh, I'm the good ground or no, I'm the stony ground. Right. Don't identify that. That ain't what this is about. It's more about recognizing where you are at that moment. So that instead of being that, you can receive the word of God. So he said there's four different types of people. The first one, see, they went by the wayside. He that hears the word, they hear it, but they don't understand it. He said, so immediately the fowls of the air, the enemy come and snatches it up. Right. So before that person even has the chance to try to dig into the word or whatever the case is, the enemy comes and he snatches it up. How? We won't get into all those details. I'm pretty sure there's a ton of different ways it can happen. So if you hear the word and you don't understand it, pause, right? Take time. Seek the father. Ask him. Take time to digest that thing. Second person was the person that received it on stony ground. Don't miss this one. He said this, the stony ground what happens with that seed? We'll go, let's let's go back. What happens with that seed? The sower cast the seed, the word of God. It fell on stony ground. He said, immediately that seed sprung up. Now, if you think about it, seeds, when they bud, when, it, when a plant starts to grow, the seed cracks, you see a little a bud come out, a little green bud. And then the root grows down seed is in the ground the bud springs up right breaks the soil it starts to get sunlight has water has minerals in the soil then the roots go down and then the bud springs up long story short what grows typically what grows first is the roots because the roots is what absorbs the minerals from the earth so eventually that plant, that fruit, that, that plant can yield some fruit. He's saying this seed fell on stony ground. So the roots can't grow. They can't get down into the dirt to get the minerals, right? So instead of that bud taking root, it sprung up. It just went straight up, right? So you can see a bud. You can see something growing. But then the sun comes out and because there's no root, it burns that plant. He said, those are the people who receive the word of God with joy. He said, what happens to those people is that as soon as the sun comes out, the tribulation, they stumble. So when you receive the word of God with joy, what happens is that joy, right? <laughs> That joy is the stony ground, but I also believe that joy is the bud. Because on the outside, you look like something's there. You look like the word of God did something for you. But when the tribulation comes, when the sun come out, you're going to stumble. So when the sun come out, people around you, they're going to recognize that word ain't in them. Right. Because they ain't doing what they say. All right. Second person. Third person. Is the thorns. So he said the seed grow among the thorns. He said the thorns will choke out the seed. He doesn't explain why. But Yahashua says the thorn, the, the seeds that grow amongst the thorns, the thorns choke out the seed and they become unfruitful. Those are people who receive the word of God 
with the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches. I will go out on a limb and say this is the majority of believers today. We get so caught up in earning a living. We get so caught up in our fleshly desires, material gain, especially in our capitalistic society. We even try to take the word of God and manipulate it to ways where we can get more stuff. We want to go to God so we can get stuff. We want to get whatever it is, you know what I mean? Instead of focusing on what the word of God is about, which is that eternal life, it's that eternal salvation. We got this thing so screwed up, man. And unfortunately, um, man, I watched this documentary. It's called uh, American Gospel Christ Alone. If you haven't watched it, check it out. And it even goes into how there's pretty much an American religion. Looks like Christianity, talks like Christianity, but it ain't Christianity. What they're not talking about is the gospel. <laughs> and when they do mention it, they're talking about how you can get something from it. <laughs> it's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. Um, man, that can be a whole different thing topic so i won't dwell there right so that's the people who receive the word with the thorns the cares of the world the, the seed grows but those thorns choke the word out and they become unfruitful so those people don't bear fruit and i want to take a pause there money ain't a fruit right just because somebody got money or just because you see somebody in a nice car, they got a nice house, whatever. That has nothing to do with uh, what's inside, what's in the heart, what's in the spirit. Now, that in itself is a whole lesson. Okay, and the fourth person is the good ground. And he said, the seed that falls in good ground it springs up and it brings forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. We need to pray and seek to be that good ground. That's who we want to be. That's what we want to be. We want to be the good ground that when the word falls on us, we're not receiving it with joy. Um, we do understand it, right? And that we can eliminate the cares of the world so that the word can get to us. It can penetrate. Right. Sit in our hearts. Let it take root. Let it be a part of us. And then see how it grows fruit. Let let the Lord. Let him dictate what that fruit is going to be. And then don't get caught up in what fruit you're yielding. He says some's going to be 30 fold. Some's going to be 60 fold. Some's going to be 100 fold. So, Father, I pray this day that your people hear your word that you circumcise their hearts, that they can truly receive your precepts, your teachings, your lessons. May we all be that good crown, Father. Mm. Heal the hearts. Allow your people to see. Allow them to hear. May they recognize their own heart problems. And in recognizing, may they see that answer. May they find that answer in your word. Speak to them, Father, how you know you need to talk to them. Heal your people, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Spend time there. Spend time there. Spend, spend time with recognizing where you are. Take a hiatus. We quick to take time for ourselves. Try to go on a vacation or whatever. Take time deliberately. Two, three, four, five, a week, whatever. Or if you got to, just wake up a little bit earlier every day. Or stay up later every day. To really seek the Father's face. Recognize who you are, where you are. 
and where you need to grow. Allow the Lord to work in you. Be that good ground. Figure out how to be that good ground. Start yielding those fruit. If more of us yielded fruit, man, the potential is amazing. That sums it up. Matthew 13, 1 through 23. I truly hope y'all have the ears to hear that. Oh. <laughs> and that your hearts aren't like mine, thick, fat, and stupid, right? <laughs> but uh, we praise God for it. Again, you hear these videos, you see them, make sure you like them, share them, subscribe them. Um, the Lord is using me just like he can be using you, just like he is using you, and he's using countless others, other people. I don't know. Anyway, help us spread the word of God. Um, if you got any feedback for me, man, any questions, comments, concern, hey, look. I encourage you. I encourage you. Start engaging. Send an email to of the soul ministry at gmail.com. Leave a comment on the video. Uh, shoot out, shoot Facebook. If you got my number, or whatever, reach out to me. You know, I'm accessible. You know, um, I want to hear some testimonies. I want to hear some feedback. I want to know if you guys are growing or not. I don't know. Maybe it's not for me to know. I don't know. Anyway, you got the channels. You got that the access to reach out to me if, if need be. Um, and also, I'm thanking, I'm thanking my homeboy, J. Kirk, J. Period, K-I-R-K, for allowing me to use his music. I love his music. You hear it in the beginning of the videos, and you hear it at the end of the videos. Um, awesome artist. Very talented. Tune into him, man. You can catch him on iTunes um, and various other apps or whatever the case may be. You can catch him on YouTube and on Facebook. His name is Jason Kirk. By the artist name, J. Period Kirk. So tune into his Hey, you can ride to the music, listen to it. You can. Yeah. Anyway, check him out. And uh, hey, much love, man. And uh, go in peace. Later.